Okay, so it's September 2019. I'm getting confident in using electric drums, you know, after using the Alesis control pad with a sample player. You know, my MIDI stuff is coming back and um, people are asking for electric drums. Uh, so I start looking online, um, learning more about them. I mean, I, I played them in the past, you know, at music stores and I, I knew that they could be good, but very expensive also. Uh, you know, so I wasn't really looking to spend very much money, um, but I found this YouTube channel from, uh, it's called 65 Drums, and, you know, there's a wealth of information on there about electric drums, and one of the videos I remember was about buying used stuff, and I had never considered doing that because I thought, you know, like used electronics, you you know, you can't look at it and know if it's going to work correctly, so you're taking some risk there. But after watching that video, he convinced me that Roland specifically, Roland electric drums are very durable and very reliable, even when bought used. So, I go onto Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace, uh, actually I don't think that existed at the point, but I went on a Craigslist and sure enough, I find this Roland drum set. It's the TD-1 KV. And so it was 150 bucks and it, it was complete. So it had everything including a um, throne, you know, the, the seat, uh, headphones, and even the, the guy threw in some sticks. So all of this for 150 bucks. So that specific kit when new was I think like seven or eight hundred dollars. And it, it's small, and so I was uh, attracted to that too. Very compact. Uh, it had the mesh snare drum head, which I, I knew from my research was preferable. So I go to the guy's house, I buy it, take it home, I start playing, and it's immediately a lot of fun. I was surprised, but I love the feel. Like the these are like the cheapest pads that Roland offers. They don't even have a name for them. Like all the other pads have model numbers. These don't, <laughs> but they actually felt really good as toms. I certainly wouldn't want to use them as a snare drum, but for the, the, the three toms, I mean, they felt great, I thought. Um, you know, you, you definitely don't want to play them too hard. You know, you'll hurt yourself, um, but uh, you know, at, at a small, light, lighter volume, medium to light, um, actually it feels really good in my opinion. Now, the one thing about this kit, or this, you know, this drum set, it comes with 15 preloaded kits. You can't change them, and you cannot create your own. So there's no tuning, which is uh, typical in uh, most of the other Roland drums. So you can't tune them, you can't change uh, the size of the drums, or any of the sounds at all. Um, you can change the pad types that you're using, you can change velocity, um, you know, there's like deep in the settings, you can do that. You can change MIDI note numbers, and that's basically it. So um, that's the limitation, but for me, coming to Electric Drums new for the first time, I'm thinking, hey, I've got 15 drum sets here. <laughs> Whereas, you know, when you have an acoustic set, you have one acoustic set. It's going to sound the same. I mean, you can tune it and make it slightly different, but not at the push of a button, you know, it's going to take you time to do that. But with this, you push a button and you instantly got a new drum set. Now, the other thing that's really cool about this, and that's what I'm going to demo in this video, is you can connect it to your computer and that opens up the whole world of samples and VST drumming. So that, you know, if you don't know what that is, it's essentially somebody in a studio records an actual drum, plays it at many different levels and different styles, and they record all of this stuff, and then they sell these packages of all these drums. So with this cheap $150 Roland kit, I can play any drum set that's ever been recorded in the world, essentially. <laughs> So, I mean, hey, if you're on a budget like I was, uh, or, you know, not even, I mean, I just wasn't willing to fork up all the money to something that was brand new to me. 
Um, and so this was a great way to get introduced. The other thing about this is it's so portable. You, you can pick the whole thing up, I mean, really with one arm, the whole thing, and you can carry it to a gig. <laughs> I've done that before. <laughs> And you get it inside. So I'm carrying the thing with one hand and I've got the amp with my other. Uh, and I just walk in and I plop them both down. I'm like, okay, let's go. <laughs> I mean, you know, a few seconds later, you have to plug things in and set the pedals. But everything else, if you've ever set up an electric drum set from ground up, it takes time. But this one, you can carry it in whole. And so it significantly reduces the setup time. So I got to say, this kit, I mean, it's great for the value. Um, I have since sold the original one that I bought. I think I sold it for like 400 So I made money off this thing, <laughs> and I even gigged with it. And then I have since found another one, same thing, TD1KV. I found it for 100 bucks, And so... If you want to buy used, you have to be patient. You're not going to find exactly what you want, exactly when you want it. So if you, you, you know, you set your Craigslist alerts and you look every so often, eventually something that's good is going to come up. And that's what's happened to me many times. And there will be many, many future videos about all the other stuff I've gotten. Okay, so here I am with the basic TD1KV and the uh, V means this PDX8 snare pad and in my opinion you know it's fun straight out of the box you know I mean that's kit one you know One thing about the ride, straight out of the box, you've got the bow, regular ride, you've got the edge, and if you hit it hard, you've got the bell. So it's velocity switching on the ride cymbal specifically. Sometimes you get that, uh, you get rim shots actually with the snare drum, so regular hits, there's the rim shot. So I don't think you can accomplish that with the regular TD1 kit because the uh, the regular one comes with a pad like, like these and so I don't think you can do a rim shot but I've never tried. But about these pads, like I said, I mean they, they feel good. That's about as hard as I'm willing to hit them with sticks but you know that's plenty hard for a lot of people. So straight out of the box, I think this kit is cool. Kit number 12 is the 808, so. You gotta have that, and it's cool. I mean, so right out of the box, I'm having fun with this thing. And then this is, I think, the 909. It's awesome. And then if you want to get, you know, uh, use this for an orchestra or whatever, you've got kit number 15 is the percussion set. So not sure what that is, but bongos and you've got velocity switching here too. So that's a regular bongo. You hit it hard or that's the regular one and you hit it harder. You get the slap. Same with this, I think this is a, a bongo also. None there, but like here you've got a, a wood block and then that's on the bow and on the edge, you've got a high wood block. So it's awesome. I mean, <laughs> there's so much you can do with this straight out of the box. But this video is about taking it a step further. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do 
The kick pedal is the weak point in this kit, in my opinion. Now, if you play heel down uh, and you're really proficient playing that way and you just do the basic, you know, like kick, you know, four on the floor type of thing. You know, you can get by, but it's, it's not that satisfying and it just doesn't work so great for me. So the one feature that I um, do straight out of the box with the TD-1 KV is to change the velocity on the kick drum. So part of the problem is you get a lot of weak hits, a lot of weak kicks. Uh, you know, if you're a power player, you typically play heel up. And you can do that with this, but it, it's, it doesn't feel very good and you, you can't do doubles uh, very well. At least I can't, and you know, I've been playing a long time, so I'm no slouch. But um, the first thing I do is switch the velocity on the kick pedal so it's always loud, so I'm not getting any of these wimpy you know, kicks. So it's a trade off because sometimes you want a little like dynamics, like you know, a little bit of a do -do, do -do. so it's a trade off, but I'm gonna demo doing the uh, velocity all the way up so the kick is always thumping. All right, so if you didn't read the manual that came with this, there's no way that you'll ever know how to do this. So I read the manual and it's in there. You long press the metronome and this drums, um, you know, there's four settings here, drums, tempo, coach, and song. The drums one starts flashing and so now I push down on the kick and I can change the velocity all the way up to 32. So it, it defaulted at nine and I'm sending it up to 32. I'm cranking it. So now every time I use the kick, it's gonna be loud no matter what. So. what I like. <laughs> so that's tweak number one for the kick. Now another tweak for the kick is you can change the pedal out altogether. You don't have to use the cheap one that comes with this. You can use the KD9 which is one of the towers and that enables you to uh, use a regular kick drum pedal or a double pedal. So there's benefit to that then you can use the KT9 or 10, which are also just pedal triggers, but of higher quality. And you know, you get, you can do the thumping and the dynamics and everything with those. I've actually played them both and uh, hands down way better than the one that, the, that this drum set comes with. But you know, there's added cost. So that's a trade-off. For me, I already had a FAT pedal, F-A-T. Uh, foot action trigger. You'll see it in one of my other videos. So there's not a setting in here for the fat pedal, but you know, most kick triggers will work in my experience with electric drums. Um, but there are specific settings for the KD9, the KT9, and the KT10. All right, similar to the velocity, you uh, hold down the metronome button. And this time when it's flashing, you want to uh, push select to get to tempo. And now it tells you, once you push down the kick trigger, it tells you the default, which is number one, which is the, the foot pedal that comes with, it, with the, the set. If you switch it up to number two, that uh, means the KD9. And if you put it to three, that's the KT9 or KT10. So those are your only three settings for kick. Now I'm going to leave it at one um, just because I'm going to switch it out with the fat pedal. And I have no idea what the difference between uh, these trigger settings are. So I'm just going to go with number one and see how it works out. I'm confident that it will be fine. Now the same with the snare drum. 
Now the K, uh, TD1KV default on the snare drum is the S2, and that means the PDX8 or the PDX6. Um, setting S1, uh, S1 for the snare is the regular pad, which is similar to this. So again, the TD1K comes with four pads and they're all the same. So for the snare drum, you're doing that and you know, whatever, you can actually still buy that kit brand new. The TD1KV, I don't believe that you can, but you can always upgrade it yourself. So anyway, and if you actually, if you hit any of these other pads, there are no trigger settings. You've got three little dashes. So you can only change the snare and the kick. And by accident, move the snare to S1. I'm putting it back to S2. And I'm assuming that will give me the rim shots because I think the regular S1 will not do rim shots. All right, so I'm done with that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is switch out the kick pedal with the fat, but I'm gonna go a step further. I'm gonna keep this uh, cheek pedal and use it for the left foot, and I'm gonna have a double kick going. So uh, let's do that. Unplug the regular kick. And I've got this splitter here. So, um, this one we'll put here, and I had to get, you have to have another cable. And this one will go under here. All right, so I've got the fat pedal plugged in and I've got the splitter going to this other pedal. Uh, it, they don't even have a name. It's just like the kick pedal. But yeah, it's working too. And it's loud every time, doesn't matter how hard or soft I hit it. It's always gonna be the same level, very loud. <laughs> so, you know, that's just my preference. You know, you do it how you want it. All right, I'm on kit nine and let's see what we've got here. So machine gunning, but if, hey, if you're a metal drummer, that's what you want. But for a regular beat, you know. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of debate whether playing acoustic drums is harder than electric drums and a lot of uh, e-drummers are like, no, yes, electric drums is easier than acoustic drums. You can cheat. <laughs> it sounds like I'm bashing these drums and I'm not, you know. And I'm going to get the same kick volume no matter what. And you know, uh, you can't do that with acoustic drums. If you want your kick solid every time, you've got to practice and get your technique so that you can do that. And that is not easy. But yeah, it's working. And so that's uh, pretty cool. So I've got a double kick TD1KV setup going. All right, so on top of that, um, another add-on you can actually get for this kit. And this is actually supported by Roland the drum set comes with an extra cable specifically for that. So it's like an add-on that they had planned for. 
It's called the OP, which I think is optional, OP-TD1C symbol. You can still get those actually new. I've seen them on Reverb. I don't know if you can get them on regular stores anymore, but it's like a hundred bucks. Uh, I don't do that. I got uh, another symbol used from a guy. It just came with a bundle. You know, I get a lot of those things where they sell a whole bunch of stuff and I just like parts and this is one of the parts. So let me throw that on there uh, and you'll see what that gives you. It's really cool. All right, so here it is. This is the OP TD1C add-on pack. And so uh, it's basically just another symbol for most kits. So let's see, so kit one. And I do, I get a little crosstalk, but it's another crash. So you got, now you've got two crashes. Which is what most drummers want, right? Uh, kit two, same thing, another crash. Kit three, that sounds like a swish or something. Or a really low, deep, dark crash. But some of them are Chinas, so I'm trying to get another crash. Ooh, that's cool. I don't know what that is. Some drum machine sound. But there we go. On kit six, you get a China. I mean, I spent a hundred bucks on this, you know, and I've got all this cool stuff. Uh, so another kit, another symbol, symbol, another China on kit nine. Awesome. Symbol. Oh, splash on kit 11. I guess that's the drums and bass kit. And there's the china, so it's all over the place, but it's cool. Kit 12. Oh, this is the 808. So I don't know what that is, but it's another sound and it's cool and I love it. The 909. Oh, just a regular symbol there. Again, low and high symbols. I'm okay with that. Oop, cowbell. Or whatever. It's been a while since I played that. Def Leppard. All right, on the, on the percussion kit, I played this earlier. It's kind of cool. You get two different sounds. You got on the bow, wind chimes, bell tree, and on the edge, sleigh bells. So, hey, if you wanna play some Christmas music, there you go. So anyway, I love it, you know? I mean, hell, let's see. There's my china, so. For you Neil Peart fans, you can do the was doesn't quite sound the same here but that's awesome. cool so that's another big upgrade and advanced technique all right so I love this kit <laughs> so awesome so I've got double bass effortlessly I mean it's not clean so you, you definitely gonna have to practice still but it's still like I'm effortlessly playing all that heel down. Try that on acoustic drums, that is that's way hard. But here it's practically effortless. Uh, and I've got the China. Uh, kit nine and one other, I think. Awesome. 
I'm totally happy with this, but some people want more than that. And you can achieve even more using a VST on your laptop. So you can essentially, if you want to pay for it, uh, you can get all sorts of crazy drum kits with actual acoustic drum samples and play this cheap hundred dollar kit and get acoustic drum sounds. And you can actually throw that on a record. I mean, it's, you know, it's not totally unheard of. You could do that if you wanted to. So yeah, let's check out VSTs. Uh, I have gotten three free drum kits. They're like the trial kits for various people. They want you to upgrade to their uh, full suite, but I'm just gonna get, I'll be happy with these three just to do the demo. So let's check it out. Okay, so I've got my laptop here. It's, you know, this is actually, again, a used laptop. Um, and it's several years old. So, you know, you can get by on a budget and still get great equipment. I mean, this is still rolling quality gear. Uh, and this laptop is a Dell laptop. It's just fine. So, um, while this is booting up, I should say, so this on the TD1 module, this is the headphones jack. And what I've done here is I've got a splitter um, and I use one of these to go to my amp and then uh, one to go to my recording device so you're getting the actual sounds on the video. So the, that's the other thing. You can use the headphones jack for headphones or you can send it to an amp. Send it to a PA in a stadium if you wanted to. <laughs> I mean, really, you could do that. Uh, you know, and if you have a pro sound engineer, he can make these sound even better. So I'm telling you, for a hundred bucks, don't sell this thing short. I think it's fantastic myself. So the thing about VSTs, uh, at least the ones that I am aware of, you actually need a, uh, a DAW, Digital Audio Workstation, I think it stands for. Um, but it's like the common software that... Uh, Everybody uses for recording or MIDI work. Um, so again, I'm just going to use a free one called Cakewalk. I actually have been using that since the late 90s, believe it or not. It's been around forever. It wasn't free back then, let me tell you. <laughs> and so it's, it's full featured. It's been around forever and for some reason they give it away for free. I have no idea why, but they do. So um, other popular ones are like Reaper. Um, I think Pro Tools, you would consider that also. Um, and some other really popular ones I'm blanking on right now. All right, so the first thing you want to do um, before you start your DAW is make the cable connections. So standard printer USB cable. So it's got the fat USB-A on one side and the USB-B. So this one is kind of fancy looking, but you don't have to have one that's fancy looking. It's just kind of what I have. Usually they're black, so nothing special, just a basic, what's known as printer cables. And it goes in up here. And the other end just goes into any USB port on your laptop. Now, I don't believe there is a driver required for this. All right, so after you've made the USB connection, the other thing of note is the sound, the sound actually comes out of the laptop. So you're using the drums and the module just to send MIDI information to your laptop and the laptop becomes the sound generator. So you plug into the headphones jack. Now you start up your DAW. Now I'm not going to discuss how to install the DAW or any of these VSTs. Follow the manufacturer's instructions. Uh, it's usually just next, 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 click, you know, finish and you're done. But for the DAW, the main thing is um, it's not easy. Usually these things are wildly complex. So uh, getting this set up is not something for the faint of heart. 
Uh, I spent quite a bit of time actually figuring this stuff out. Um, and now I've got it set up so it works, and I saved it so it works every time. So once you've got it set up, it's set up. But it does take some time and some learning this stuff. Uh, the one thing, you have to make sure that your TD1 is recognized as a MIDI input device on your DAW. If your DAW doesn't recognize the TD1, nothing will work. So always check that first. Now I brought up the first um, VST I'm going to try. Again, this was free. So I'm going to just check to see that everything is working as far as audio by using the keyboard to, to you know, just hit all the drums. So now that that's working, let's see if we get anything out of this. And we do. So cool. Now each VST, you can set volumes of different instruments, uh, which you can't actually do here other than the kick. Remember I checked, I changed the velocity on the kick. But here you can actually mix the volume of all the drums. So that's another benefit of using the VST. But, you know, it's complex, it's complicated and you've got to lug a laptop around with you. Now I'm using a piano bench. There are better ways. You know, if you were gigging, you would get a proper stand. They sell proper stands for laptops. Um, but so, yeah. And it even recognized the extra symbol, so that's cool. But yeah, so. And you'll notice it still, um, it keeps the velocity of the kick. It doesn't matter how hard or soft I, I uh, press down on the pedal. The velocity setting is in the module and it's sending it to here. So it's getting a 127 velocity on your kick and it's going to send it out that way. So it's nice that you still have control out of this if you want it. Now if I change kits here, it doesn't matter. I'm cycling through all the kits now. I'm not playing these kits, I'm playing this kit. Alright, so that's uh, VST number one. Let's try number two, which is MT Power Drums. So let's see what we've got here. So one thing with the VSTs that I know people struggle with is the hi-hat. So sometimes it works great and other times not so great. And you have to go in there and tweak settings. So that's one thing with a module, you know, Roland has everything tweaked for you. You just plug and play. So uh, that's not the case with a VST. In fact, we're lucky that the MIDI notes match up. You know, they, uh, Roland used the standard MIDI notes for all these uh, drums, and the VSTs used the standard MIDI notes too. Uh, but you can change them, actually. And the reason why you might want to change the MIDI note number on the module is because in the uh, VST, you can get different sounds. Like, for example, in this one, you have three different options for the snare drum sound. Uh, same with all the others that I've used. So if you wanted to get one of these other snare drum sounds, you long press and select over to coach. And this is the MIDI number, the MIDI note number. So I hit the snare drum and the uh, current value is 38 and I can change it to whatever I want and you can change the MIDI note number for all the other pads too you just hit it first you can change that one I'm not going to change them because I am happy with the way it's set up but you can change them and this is how you would do it so I'm going to set my snare drum back to 38
Uh, here's SSD5 pre kit. Sounds kind of quiet. I wonder what I've done to make it so quiet. So usually the VSTs have a volume control in there somewhere. And then you've got the, the volume control of the laptop itself and the volume of the amp. But So I'm going to crank the laptop volume. So there you go, VSTs with a TD1KV, believe it or not. And uh, you can also use this to record um, MIDI. So you can send the MIDI data straight to your DAW, record all the MIDI stuff, and then uh, if you want, you can edit the MIDI. You can copy and paste stuff. Uh, choose a different instrument, you know, different sounds for what you played. So sky's the limit, and for a hundred dollar item, I mean, uh, really cool. So there you go, VSTs with the TD1KV. Next up is layering. So you can actually do layering, which is multiple sounds. You hit one pad, and you get multiple sounds. So it is limited, but I'll demo that now. So the way to do layering is by using the VST, instead of sending the output from the, from the laptop to your amp, you send the output back in to the mix in of your module, and then from the headphones jack you go to your amp. So what you're doing there is you're getting the sounds of the TD1, whichever kit you select, and layering it onto whatever you've got on your VST. So let me make those cable connections. I'm going to turn everything off because uh, with VSTs that I've used anyway, if you unplug the um, audio jack, it hoses the whole thing. <laughs> so I'm going to shut everything down. In fact, it didn't even like it when I turned off the, the module, so I probably should have turned off or shut down the DAW first. You don't have to shut off the laptop altogether, but shut down the software. All right. So this is going to the amp and my recording device. So I'm putting this into the headphones jack and I had to get you have to have another cable uh, preferably stereo um, and this goes from the headphones jack and the laptop to the mix in of the module now some guys uh, prefer to have an audio interface between the module and the laptop and that does give you more control over the signal and supposedly decreases latency which is the time after you hit the drum the amount of time it takes for the signal to go through all these electronics through the computer and the processor and then out to the amp that's called latency so um, you can buy what's called an audio interface which supposedly uh, will decrease the latency, but going direct, in my case anyway, works just fine, so I'm not going to bother with the audio interface. All right, so I'll turn this back on. And that's the other cool thing, like these buttons are easily pushed with your stick, so I can turn it on. I can switch kits, you know, with my stick. All right, so... Now I'm playing, these are all, again, my TD1 kit sounds. Now I fire up my DAW, and let's go with SSD, which is one of the popular paid programs, um, SSD, Steven Slate Drums.
So I can see looking that everything is triggering. So I am layering. Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell, but um, I can see everything's working. The one way to really tell is if I select the percussion set, you know, these are all like uh, uh, bongos. So I should get a bongo and a tom when I hit this. So you can hear there's a bongo and a tom going on. Same with there. And here I believe the percussion is a tambourine, but on here you're going to have a hi-hat. So I should get a tambourine and a hi-hat. So there you are, you're layering. So uh, let's do something cool. Let's layer Stephen Slate Drums 5, the free version, with 808 sounds. So even here, you can hear you can hear the symbol and also the fake whatever. So let's try volume control on the module and get a little bit of a more Stephen Slate and less 808. Let's see if that works. So it's hard for me to hear. That's kind of the thing with layering, you know, it's... Uh, you can't really distinguish too much. But here you can, you can hear the booming on the kick drum. So there you have it. I've layered the Stephen Slate drums kit with the 808. Let's do it with the 909. So there you have it. And the thing about layering is sometimes you don't want to hear both sounds. Sometimes you just want to hear one fat sound and I'm getting a pretty fat sound. Now let's see what it sounds with like the Roland this is kit number one, the regular, like, out-of-the-box rolling kit, layered with Stephen Slate drums. So, yeah, it's, uh, you can tell it's beefier. It's, like, it's got a little bit more, uh... Uh, texture, a little bit more oomph, it's just fat and uh, cool. So there you are, you're layering with the TD1 KV and a VST. So there you have it, 100 bucks, rolling TD1 KV, free software, I'm ready for the arena.